San Francisco's fourth tallest skyscraper and the city's tallest residential building is the 645-foot tall Millennium Tower. In less than five weeks of sales, the luxurious tower sold $100 million worth of condos. The demand for its luxury condos was so great that owners were reselling their units at two to three times the price they originally paid for them, with the penthouse selling for $10 million. The skyscraper provides the inhabitants with high-end amenities like a pool, fitness center, wine cellar and tasting room, movie theater, and concierge services. The tower has prominent figures as tenants, like the San Francisco 49ers quarterback Joe Montana and late venture capitalist Tom Perkins. Millennium Tower has even won awards for its structural integrity, including the American Concrete Institution Award for Construction and the Structural Engineering Project of the Year. The tower was once known for its impeccable views of the city, but now, residents of the Millennium Tower are fleeing the building and seeking to recover the value of their condos, which have depreciated significantly. Those attempting to sell are forced to slash their listing prices or pull their units off the market. Since its completion in 2009, the tower has unleashed a series of problems for the residents and building owners alike. By 2016, the building had sunk 16 inches into the soft soil and landfill of San Francisco's dense financial district. It was also leaning, creating a 2-inch tilt at the base and a 6-inch lean at the top. The building's ongoing tilt has drawn comparisons to the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy and prompted a lawsuit by residents against the building's developers and designers, and rounds of recrimination between the developers and city officials. When it was first constructed, Millennium Tower was visualized as a symbol of the revitalization of San Francisco's south of Market District. It has been the talk of the town for quite some time now due to its precarious tilt and sink. By 2020, the tower had sunk 17 inches and tilted 16 inches to the northwest. According to reports and satellite images, the tower will continue to sink at a rate of 2 inches per year which is double of what the engineers estimated earlier. Millennium Tower has sunk an additional inch and tilted another 2 and a half inches towards the Transbay Transit Center across the street. In a few years, if the tilting continues at the current rate, the 58-story luxury building could reach the point where the elevators and plumbing may no longer operate. The tower's unsteady footing has triggered a host of other issues, including cracks in the basement, declining home value, accusations of fraud, and numerous legal battles. Residents have also complained of bad odor in their units, floors bubbling up from moisture, cracked walls, and a giant fissure in the window on the 36th floor. Structural and geotechnical engineers are making daily routine checks of the building's basement to monitor the growth of cracks on the stress gauges. The problem with Millennium Tower arose because the 60 to 90 foot long friction piles supporting it were driven into sandy soil rather than the bedrock, 200 feet down. The tower sits on a land that is prone to liquefaction and often the solution for high-rises built on liquefaction zones is to drill and anchor down to bedrock. A blame game is kicked off where developers of the neighboring construction, Transbay Joint Powers Authority, claimed Millennium Tower to have inadequate foundation. But Ron Hamburger, the engineer leading the project to fix the issue, blames construction work on the transit center claiming that the crews dug an 18-meter hole and pumped millions of liters of water out of the ground. Dewatering is the process of removing ground or surface water to provide a safe working environment and avoid soil erosion. Chris Jeffries, a founding partner at Millennium Partners, said that when the water levels under the Millennium Tower dropped, the sand compressed and caused the building to settle. However, the Transbay Joint Powers Authority asserted that they are not at fault for the building's sink and tilt. The exact details about what caused this issue still remain unclear, but what is obvious is that the soil that the skyscraper sits on is not behaving as expected. While the tower remains habitable and apparently safe, 
Still, the situation needs to be stabilized as soon as possible. The legal dispute has cost San Francisco $15.7 million as attorney fees, a sum that could end up being paid by the taxpayers. A total of nine lawsuits have already been filed, involving 146 attorneys. In 2018, a plan for retrofitting the sinking and leaning tower was proposed, with an estimated cost of $100 million. The fix involves anchoring one side of the building to bedrock with piles while allowing the other side to continue sinking until it evens out, before driving the remaining piles necessary to secure the building. This is a process called underpinning, and it's fairly common. Reports revealed that the new proposal may stop the tower from sinking further, but would not correct its tilt entirely. It was estimated that only 50% of the tilt will be evened out over a period of 10 years with this method, and the rest of it would be leveled over the next half a century. In November 2020, the repair project began with a planned 52 pilings to be sunk to bedrock. These pilings would be tied to the existing foundation to mitigate further sinking. But before any progress could be made on correcting the issue, the repair came to a halt in August 2021 due to an unexpected problem. Engineers had to suspend the operation because the building's foundation had sunk another inch since the upgrade work had started and the tilting had increased five inches. Work was put on hold for the engineers to assess what had caused this problem. It was revealed that the holes that had been dug for the retrofit were causing even more soil movement. Today, the building's total tilt at the top is 26 inches, an increase of 10 inches since the repair project began. At the beginning of 2022, a new scheme for fixing the tower was outlined. The 52 new piles in the original fix would be replaced with 18. These 18 piles would go even deeper underground, and because there would be fewer of them there would be less disturbance to the soil under the building. The plan was approved, but the cost of the revised fix increased from the initial $100 million to an estimated $500 million. After crews installed 18 piles in March 2022, the settlement stopped at that corner. But data showed the sinking resumed when crews started digging along the northwest edge of the foundation at Mission and Fremont Street to make room for a foundation extension. According to Chief Engineer Ron Hamburger, the Millennium Tower would need to lean more than 70 inches for it to be unable to withstand an earthquake, a far cry from its current 26 inches tilt. That said, the building would be rendered uninhabitable if the plumbing and elevators stop working, and that could occur when the lean gets to around 35 to 40 inches. With millions of dollars at stake, for the engineers, it's a race against time to fix this sinking and tilting building. Do you think the site will be stabilized before it's too late? Comment your thoughts below and let us know. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.